Hi, my name is Rose, and today we're going to cover how to make a blank landmark template in 3D Slicer. So this is a really useful tool that Slicer offers that can help save you time, help with your organization, because when you start with a ready-made template of your landmarks, you never forget a landmark, you never forget their order, and you don't accidentally swap your left and right landmarks. So the process is pretty quick and simple, so let's dive in. We're going to begin by opening the markups module, which you can do by clicking on the icon at the top or by using the drop down menu on the left, whichever you prefer. Next, we're going to create a points list and then we'll rename that node. So you can do that by either double clicking or you can right click, select rename and then give it a title. So I'm just going to call this blank landmark template and click OK. You can also use this description area on the right if you'd like to. You could add the date you started the project or the lab that the project is for. But then we'll just expand this control points menu. And we also want to expand the advanced menu, so we'll scroll down and then expand that as So well. here we can add empty landmarks that we'll be able to attach coordinates to later. So I'm just going to add a couple of points to use as an example, and then you can rename them just as we did above by double clicking on those titles. So I'll just use Nasion, Nasale, Bazion, and Epistheon. And just like before, you had that description section over to the right. So you can leave this blank or you could use abbreviations for your landmarks. You could add a detailed description of how to find those landmarks, whatever you'd prefer. So next, what you want to do is lock that list so you don't accidentally add or subtract a landmark. So by clicking that icon now, when I just try and add a few more points, the list remains un unchanged. We haven't accidentally added a landmark. And the last step is just to save your template. So I'm going to click the save icon at the top. And I don't want to save the scene as well. So I'm going to deselect everything by clicking that uh, check mark. And then only selecting my blank landmark template. And you want to make sure that you're saving it as a markups JSON file and that you've selected a directory for it to go to. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop and click save. So now what I'm going to do is close out Slicer as if we were starting a data collection process. And I'm going to pull in that blank template we just created so I can practice taking points. So I'll do that by clicking this data icon to the left. And now I'm going to choose files to add and then select that template we just created, click open. And then this window is just showing us it's a markups file and it's in the right format. So now we just have to navigate back to that markups module. So you can do that by clicking the icon to the top or using the drop down menu. So we're going to expand that control points menu again. And we can see all of our empty landmarks ready to go. We can assign coordinates to them now. So I'm going to load a model of a skull so that we can practice placing landmarks from a template. So first thing you want to do when you're ready to start collecting data is to orient the model so that you're visualizing the area where you're going to place your first landmark. So for us, in this case, it's Nasion. So I'm going to rotate this model to see the front of the skull. And when you're placing landmarks, you really want to zoom in so you can place them as accurately as possible. Today, I'll just be moving pretty quick. So when you're ready to place your first point, you click this icon to the left and you can see it glows green until you place it and then it's turned purple. So you can customize those colors as well. And when I'm ready to click and place Nasale, I'll select that icon again. You can see those coordinates changing for Nasale until I place that point and then they're stable. And you can see a check mark next to both of those. Now, if you make a mistake and you want to delete those coordinates without deleting your landmark list, you'll click this icon to clear your points. So I select Nasion and Nasale and click that icon. Now, if you want to continuously place landmarks every time that you click, you can select this drop down arrow next to our landmark placing icon and select place multiple control points. 
So now the first place that I click will be Nasion, and then immediately my next click will be Nasale. Now in this case, our next points are on the base of the skull, so I want to stop placing landmarks. So you can either just right click, or you can use the cursor icon at the top of the screen to stop placing your landmarks, and then you can adjust your model. So here I'm going to rotate to the base of the skull. And then when I'm in position, I can select that icon again to place my points. And now the first place it'll place a point is for the Bayesian landmark that I've created. Now you can see all my coordinates have been placed, uh, but before we finish this video, I have one last tip to show you. And for that, I'm going to erase all these coordinate points. So I'm going to clear these out without deleting my actual list. And then I'm just going to rotate the skull back to look at the anterior view again. So we're looking at the face of the skull. So if you're ever missing material from your specimen, you can't take one of your landmarks. For example, if we were missing the nasal area of the specimen, you can use this skip placement icon to skip nasion and nasale, or whatever landmark you weren't able to take on your specimen. So now that I've clicked that, the first place when I place a point, the first place it's going to jump to is now Bayesian to place a landmark. And you can see those X's next to Nasion and Nasale. So now when I place a point, I've got data for Bayesian and now Epistheon. And that could be useful when you're working with fragmented data. So that's how you make and use a blank template in 3D Slicer. Um, I think this is a really great tool. I'm definitely going to use it in my own data collection. I think it'll save me time, make sure I won't accidentally forget a landmark. So as always, I just want to say thank you to the 3D Slicer team. They made this amazing software free for everyone to use. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, just like and subscribe below for the Daily on Lab YouTube channel. Thank you.